This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. The U.S. auto industry is setting records for improving fuel economy and slashing emissions, mostly because of electrified vehicles. The EPA says light vehicles set a record high in 2022 for fuel economy at an average of 26 mpg. It said BEVs and PHEVs alone improved the average by 1.2 mpg. And that's a big deal. Previously, boosting fuel efficiency over the whole fleet by even just a few tenths was good news. And the average fuel economy is expected to jump to 26.9 mpg when the next report comes out. And better still, emissions fell to record lows. CO2 emissions dropped by 10 grams per mile to 337 grams per mile on average. That's a 27% drop since 2004. Looks like the Cybertruck launch is getting off to a slower start than expected. Reuters reports that Tesla is struggling to produce 4680 battery cells with its new dry coating technology. Right now, it can only make enough batteries for 24,000 Cybertrucks a year, far short of the 200 to 250,000 annual sales target that Elon Musk has talked about. Nine different sources told Reuters that Tesla can't hit mass production levels with the dry coating of the cathode. But even so, Tesla runs two 4680 production lines right now in Austin, and it's about to add eight more over the next two years. So once it gets through production hell, it should have plenty of capacity. The question will be, does it need that much capacity? Can Tesla really sell a quarter of a million Cybertrucks a year? That's going to be one of the topics on AutoLine After Hours later today. We'll have Sandy Monroe on the show, along with Tu Lee from Sino Auto Insights and Joe White from Reuters. The truck styling sure is controversial. Most people can't stand it, but yet, two of the auto industry's greatest designers heap praise on it. The late Sid Mead, futurist and designer extraordinaire, said the Cybertruck changed the form language of pickup trucks forever. And Giorgetto Giugiaro, the famous Italian designer, calls the Cybertruck a masterpiece. He says it's the Picasso of automobiles. So tune in later today to hear what our guests have to say about the styling on AutoLine After Hours. Chinese EVs are pouring into Europe for one really big reason. They can charge twice as much for their vehicles. For example, the BYD Dolphin costs $15,500 in China, but it's $39,000 in Europe. Tesla's China-made Model 3 sells for €13,000 more in Europe than it does in China. Even though Chinese automakers double the price, they're still selling EVs cheaper than what European automakers charge. Aside from shipping costs and a 10% import tariff, those higher prices are pure profit. And that's why Chinese EVs are flooding into Europe. Meanwhile, Volkswagen is in deep trouble in China. Its ID family of electric vehicles just aren't resonating with Chinese consumers. The ID7 sedan launched last week and only received 300 orders in three days. That's even though it costs nearly half as much in China than it does in Europe. Meanwhile, the BYD Song L which launched on the same day as the ID7, received more than 8,000 orders in three days. Car News China reports that VW is having trouble selling the ID7 because it's offering configurations that customers don't want. So they're waiting until the one they do want is available. So VW may have to cut the price like it had to do with the ID3 because of poor sales. At CES January 9th through 12th, 2024, Intrepid's looking forward to seeing you at our booth 3666 Las Vegas Convention Center in the West Hall. We'll be demonstrating the latest and greatest in the software-defined vehicles and zonal architectures, automotive Ethernet technologies like 10-base T1S and multi-gigabit. See you at CES 2024 Las Vegas Convention Center in West Hall booth 3666 or visit intrepidcs.com slash sales. Even though GM's AV unit cruise is under attack in San Francisco for being a safety hazard, 
Waymo says autonomous vehicles are far safer than human beings. It released new research that shows its vehicles had 0.41 incidents that resulted in an injury for every 1 million miles driven, compared to 2.78 incidents for human drivers. That's over six times safer. Waymo only compared its data to accident information from the areas where its vehicles operate, so it's attempting to give a more apples-to-apples -apples comparison. It says there would have been about 17 more accidents resulting in injury if a human had driven the same amount of miles as its vehicles. Chevy posted the price of the new top off-road trim line of the Colorado, the ZR2 Bison, and it's kind of pricey. The package, which includes unique suspension, steel bumpers, skid plates, and wheels and tires, costs an additional $12,000 on top of the ZR2, bringing the total price to just over $60,500, including the destination charges. Surprisingly, that's also about $3,500 more than the Bison package cost for the bigger Silverado pickup. Slowly but surely, we're seeing the impact of the transition to electric vehicles. Hyundai says it's going to close two forging factories in South Korea, which is something we expected to see. About four years ago on Autoline After Hours, consultant Paul Eichenberg predicted that forging operations were under the most threat from EVs because the average ICE vehicle has about 112 forgings, while the average EV only has about five. Just a year ago, the transition to EVs looked like it was going to happen quickly. Today, sales of electrics in the U.S. have slowed considerably, and that's making automotive suppliers very wary of committing to EV programs. For example, suppliers invested heavily to make GM's electric pickups, only to see most of that program delayed for over a year. Suppliers don't get paid until they ship parts, so that investment is a real drag on their finances. And Ford convinced suppliers to triple their component production for the F-150 Lightning, only to see sales stumble. Now Ford is cutting production in half, and most suppliers aren't getting any price adjustments for the lower volume. And this should be a warning sign to the industry. If suppliers drag their feet on bidding for new EV programs, that's going to make the transition to EVs go even slower and cost more. As we said earlier in the show, VW is struggling in China, but there's hope that the ID Buzz's more retro design will be a hit with Chinese consumers. Even so, that model looks like it will be facing some competition. A company called Hema, which used to count Mazda as a partner, is coming out with an all-electric van in China next year called the EX00 that has a similar shape and style to the ID Buzz. It's actually a little bit shorter than the VW van and will offer an estimated 480 kilometers or just under 300 miles of range. The interior looks a little bit cheap to me and the layout is a little wonky, especially the two different style seats in the third row. So it might seem like the success of the EX00 will come down to pricing. But unfortunately, we don't have that yet. Generative AI like ChatGPT is the next big thing, but we still have a learning curve on how to use it. A Chevrolet dealership in California, Chevrolet of Watsonville, started using a chatbot for its customer service on its website. So someone asked the bot to write a recipe for the best pickup truck in the world, and the bot spit out a bunch of features that a truck needs to have. Then the person asked the bot to provide a list of trucks that met that list, and it spit out the Chevrolet Silverado, GMC Sierra, Ram 1500, and Toyota Tundra. Then the person asked the bot which truck it would buy, and it recommended the Ford F-150 as a top choice. The Detroit Free Press broke this story and reached out to the dealership for a comment, but nobody is saying nothing. And remember, this is AutoLine's last day of the year. We'll be back on January 3rd. And until then, we wish you all happy holidays and a fantastic new year. AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone. 
solutions for your journey, and by Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game, 